start the recording. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the registration webinar for the Regional Alliance Marketplace for Procurement, also known as RAMP. My name is Crystal Elizabeth, and on behalf of the Office of Procurement, we are pleased that you could join us today for this informative presentation. Today's webinar will include an overview of the RAMP registration process, including some commonly asked questions regarding registration, certifications, and opportunities. RAMP offers a vast number of contracting opportunities with the City of Los Angeles, as well as with other regional partners who also use this platform to post opportunities. Please know that this presentation is being recorded and you will receive a copy of the recording, the slide deck, and the chat history. We also kindly ask that you meet yourselves in order to clearly hear today's presentation. If you have any questions or comments during the presentation, feel free to drop them via the chat function where we have staff available to answer your questions there in real time. However, if time permits at the end of our presentation, we may take a few questions from the chat function and answer them verbally before the session ends at noon. We hold these webinars on a monthly basis and we would like to know how many new folks have joined us this month? As such, we have a short survey that we ask you to respond to for our own information. We would like to know if you have ever attended one of our RAMP webinars or presentations in the past. Please take a moment to respond. Joanne, can you please show us the results of the poll? Well, it's good to see how many new and returning attendees we have joining us for today's webinar. Thank you for participating. Shannon, Shannon Hoppes serves as the City Procurement Officer for the City of Los Angeles. Shannon has been the chief proponent of this platform and has been instrumental in securing the platform of the regional partners added to this platform of opportunities. Welcome, Shannon. Thanks, Crystal. Um, great to see all of you this morning, um, especially so many newcomers. We want to make sure we're um, getting to those of you who are not familiar with RAMP and uh, want to learn more about it. And to those of you returning, welcome back. Uh, we would love to hear from you on how you're doing. Um, if you've been able to successfully register and, and what your experience has been. So hopefully we'll have time to go through some of that at the end of the meeting. Uh, again, my name is Shannon Hoppus and uh, welcome. And I think we can head to our next slide. So we're gonna jump right into it. What is RAMP? Why, why do I need to know about it? Why should I be interested? Well, what it stands for is our Regional Alliance Market Marketplace for Procurement, or again, RAMP. Uh, it is a platform that is hosted by the city of LA um, to post our solicitations, our opportunities, or to notify you of the things we want to purchase. Uh, not only does the city post on RAMP, but we have several regional partners that we'll talk about later that also use RAMP in order to diversify their vendor pool. So even if you're not interested in solely contracting with the city of LA, this is really still a good uh, resource for you as a contractor to know about, to learn from, to gain um, tools from. So we're glad you're here. And uh, with that also, it's important to know that RAMP houses um, well over at this point, $10 billion worth of opportunities. So that's a lot of money that uh, we are collectively looking to spend. And hopefully we're gonna be spending that with your business. The city of LA uh, spends on average about $5 billion worth in procurement. So again, um, with these additional partners that are here on RAMP, we, we have quite a bit that is now centralized onto one platform. 
And that was really with the goal of making it easier for small businesses in particular to access um, multiple opportunities in one place. So you didn't have to visit multiple um, websites. So that was our intention in developing Ramp. And again, we're, we're happy to share this with you. Um, not only do we have the current um, partners here, but we are continuously adding to this space. Uh, we'll talk about that again, just in just a moment. Next slide. Again, we know that um, small businesses are really the backbone of our economy. So again, the goal was to centralize as many of these opportunities into one, one space. And it was also about giving you all um, the chance to interact with one another. Again, creating this marketplace of sorts so you could become familiar with one another, use these webinars to, um, to connect with one another and build relationships with one another in order that you might even be able to um, enter into a contract maybe uh, with one another. It's also an opportunity for you to get familiar with the players in the room, whether that be the city um, employees that are doing the purchasing or whether that be the prime co contractors the, or the main contractors that we contract with that are then looking for maybe subcontractors, which a lot of you typically are. Uh, a lot of you would typically act as subcontractors. And this is really a space for you, again, to get familiar with uh, those prime contractors and uh, the city personnel as well. Next slide. As I spoke uh, earlier about our regional partners, this is some, these are some of the partners that are on ramp that are either posting their opportunities on ramp or are looking to our vendor pool for um, their outreach. So at the top there, you see LA 28 or the Olympics that will actually be posting um, in the coming months, uh, more closer to 2026, but they are post going to be using Ramp as one of their resources to communicate all of these opportunities. So if you're looking to do business uh, during the Olympics, this is also a great place to be. But in addition, as I said earlier, to the city's opportunities, you have City of Hope, Cedar sinai other government agencies, other um, private industry that is looking to ramp to, again, diversify their vendor pool. So they uh, not only use ramp to um, post their opportunities, they also use ramp to notify you all of their events. So if they're hosting um, an outreach event or such as LA 28, they're going to be um, probably notifying you of when um, there's maybe some workshops that they might be hosting. Any of those type of things are also going to be here on Ramp. So Ramp isn't just about notifying you of the opportunities, but um, again, much more than that. So by the end of this webinar, we really encourage you to register in Ramp, see what it does for your business, build a business profile. Um, that really is um, about advertising the type of business you are, building a profile that talks about um, the type of work you've done, brags about uh, maybe who you've worked with. So um, we really encourage you to do that again by the end of this webinar. Next slide. I really did hit on some of these things again about creating that business profile. It's very important. That business profile is going to be what matches you, your business, to the opportunities we have. And that is typically done through building your NAICS codes. Those are the industry codes that identify the type of business you are. So that's how we are able to match you with the appropriate um, opportunities. So you're not flooded with opportunities that don't match your business. So it's very important that you spend a bit of time building that business profile. It doesn't take a lot of time, but um, be mindful, thoughtful of how to build that business profile so you get the best results out of RAMP. But um, in addition uh, to all that I've said, 
again, there's so much more here on ramp, including instructions on how to bid. Um, I, again, the contact of um, the employees that are doing the solicitations themselves and the ability to connect with the sub, sub and prime contractors. We also have something that's not listed here. We have what's called a pre-bidders conference. And that is really open to the public. That is where we, as the city, talk about the solicitation that we posted. Uh, the, that gives the contractors the ability to ask questions. And even if you're not ready to bid at that time, you can still attend that meeting and hear the questions that are being asked, the answers that are being given. You can see who is in the room. You can You can learn about the prime contractors that are interested in doing business with us. So in turn, you can then start to build those relationships and build that rapport with those prime contractors. So I can't emphasize enough how useful, how um, much of a use uh, tool this is for to add to your tool belt. Next slide. Again, um, I've hit on a lot of this. The information goes well beyond the city. This is really about just diversifying our vendor pool, making sure you're aware of what is available to the small business community. This is real this was a platform that was designed for you. It was designed to connect you in a way that we saw would be most beneficial to you as small businesses. So again, make those business profiles um, robust and um, that will in turn make you visible to those agencies, whether it be the city or our regional partners that are looking to do business with you. Next slide. So now I'm gonna hand it back to Crystal because she's gonna uh, show us a quick video, but so, thank you so much for your time and it's great to see you today. Thank you, Shannon, for that great overview of the benefits of RAMP. Now we would like to share a testimonial video from one of our vendors on RAMP. Hi, my name is Kevin Ramsey, and I'm president of Alameda Construction Services. We've been in business since 1997. We are a site concrete contractor, we do curb and gutter, sidewalks, driveways, uh, that type of work. We also do minor structural concrete. We use ramp to, to find out about opportunities. And also when we're looking for work, uh, we go to ramp and, uh, and search the site and see what opportunities are out there. And every agency in the city has their own contracts, but you can find out all about that when you go, to, when you register with ramp. And then, cause that's where you go to look for the project. So all the city agencies put all of their bid opportunities in ramp. The advice that I, I would recommend is keep the faith. You could do this, find your opportunities, find something that'll fit for your company, find something to, uh, that'll fit for your scope of work. The most important thing is to register in ramp. Because if you, when, once you register in ramp, then, you, you you find the opportunity sometimes the opportunity to find you you know people are looking for you so looking around at least two or three times a week find the opportunity that you like put your proposal in learn from your proposal and do it again do it again do it again and then one of these times you're gonna you're gonna get the opportunity to do it and then once you do it you do a good job so they can call you back that's how we do our business you know we like to do repeat business with customers that like to do business with us. That's how you that's how you stay in business. That's how you get business or ramp. It's a great opportunity. Don't miss out. Make sure you register, go there and look and send your proposals in. testimonial from Kevin Ramsey on the benefits of RAMP, and we are glad it has served him well as an important resource for his business. Now for an overview of the RAMP registration process. 
The first step is to click on the login register green colored button on the top right hand corner to begin the registration process. After doing so, you will be taken to the Angelino account landing page. Please sign in by entering your email address. The registration process can be done rather quickly, taking about 15 minutes to complete. Next, please enter your email again. Make sure that your password includes uppercase, lowercase, a number, and special characters. And for your phone number, it's recommended that you list your cell phone number. Lastly, be sure to check I'm not a robot, then click on the blue register button. The system will indicate that a verification email has been sent to you, so proceed to check your email for verification from Angelino. You should receive a welcome to Angelino email. Angelino is a city's single sign-on system, which allows users to log into several city websites with a single login credential. An Angelino account is required in order to register and log into Ramp. Activate your account by clicking on the green link within the email. Fill out the noted fields. For sole proprietorships, your name is the company name, not the DBA. Do not put a DBA as your company name. Sole proprietorships will not be required to add a tax ID. As noted on the slide, filling out your company's information will also enable you to determine whether your company is already registered in RAMP. This is important in order to avoid establishing a duplicate account. Your title must be typed in where indicated. For sole proprietorships, enter the owner's name. Complete all of these sections and only enter a registered DBA. DBAs are registered with the county where your business is located. You may add a logo if you have one. In the summary section, this is your opportunity to clearly describe what your company does. The space allows a maximum of 200 characters, not including spaces, so be concise. For the business address section, do not use a PO box. Use a physical address, otherwise the system will reject your entry. Please note that your phone number requires dashes. Please also enter your email address. If you have a business tax registration certificate or BTRC, please enter that number. Otherwise, contact the city's Office of Finance to apply for one. Your BTRC only applies if your business is located within the city of LA or if you're interested in doing business with the city of LA. While it does not contain an asterisk indicating a required field to be filled out, please indicate whether your company is a for-profit or non-profit business. The most important step is register as, where it is encouraged that the prime sub designation be selected. By selecting this option versus selecting only prime or only sub, you increase the number of notifications you may receive regarding all opportunities related to your business type. Please note that these designations refer to all types of vendors, not to be confused with only those in the construction field. The North American Industry Classification System, or NICE codes, can be found in your taxes on the header under box B, or you can find the codes at the US Census website at the address noted on the slide. These codes are related to your business industry and are six digits long. By completing this section, you will be notified of contracting opportunities that relate to your business industry. Please review your company's NICE codes to make sure the codes listed under a company's profile are relevant to your company's type of work. Keep in mind that only your company's administrator can change your company's NICE codes. See the user manual section for the support documentation on how to update your company's NICE codes if necessary. At this stage, you may complete the demographics that relate to you as a business owner. The other identifying info drop-down space is for identifying male, female, or other. Number of employees is optional if under 20. For annual revenue, this information is optional to provide. For the work history section, it is your opportunity to talk about your work experience. You may wish to use any information from a LinkedIn account if you have one. This slide lists the various certifications that you may have applied for and serves as a space for verification of your current certifications with recognized agencies. You may skip the certification step if it doesn't apply to you. 
Otherwise, if certifications were completed by any of the other entities as noted on the left side of the slide, please know that they are recognized by the City of Los Angeles as well. If you skip this section initially, know that you may return to it later if or when you have certifications to list. You are now at the end of your registration process where you can review your profile, listing your business information. Please take time to review it carefully, especially the administrator details, company name, and tax ID, as these fields can only be changed by RAMP support. After reviewing the information, scroll all the way to the bottom and click on the green Submit button. You are officially registered in RAMP when you see the Thank you for registering message. As stated on all vendor profiles, the City of Los Angeles does not endorse, takes no responsibility for, nor exercises control over the information by the linked organizations. The City of Los Angeles is also not responsible for its view, content, nor does it vouch for the accuracy or accessibility of the information. The City of Los Angeles also cannot, scrut cannot authorize the use of copyrighted materials containing linked websites. Users must request such information and authorization from the sponsor or owner of the linked website. Now for a review of some RAMP resources. To access these resources, please click on support at the top right-hand corner next to the login register button, where you will locate frequently asked questions regarding registration, your RAMP profile, certifications, and other helpful information. You may also wish to refer to the set of frequently asked questions that were included in the initial email regarding your RAMP webinar registration. You can also access user manuals for submitting your company compliance documents for understanding the Business Inclusion Program, or BIP, outreach process, as well as how to add NICE codes and licenses to your profile. We highly recommend that you take the time to review these resources before submitting a snow ticket requesting technical assistance, as they may provide the information you are seeking. Now we would like to cover some frequent account-related questions. After you have registered, you may have some additional account questions. One question includes, how do I update my business profile? We recommend that you refer to the account management manual for guidance on how to manage users, whether they're pending or being added, and how to update your account. Only the noted administrator can edit business inclusion program or BIP roles or access to other users, can deactivate inactive users, add users, request certification verifications, and submit compliance documents. You cannot delete users. You can only deactivate them. This is to prevent them from creating a new account. All users must have an Angelino sign-in account and must have been added to your account during the registration process. See page 7, section 3A of the Registering on RAMP new registration manual for more information. Another account-related question may be, how do I change company names and tax IDs? The company name and tax ID are two fields the account administrator cannot change. In order to do so, please send a request by submitting a RAMP web form using the link shown on the slide and attach official documentation, such as the California Secretary of State filing, business tax registration certificate, BTRC, or tax account document supporting these changes. One last account related question we receive often is, how do I change the company account administrator? If the current administrator is no longer with the company and or unable to request the administrator change, we ask that you send a request by submitting a RAMP web form using the link shown on the slide and attach a letter on your company's letterhead. The letter should be signed by someone who is legally authorized to sign your company's documents, and it should state the following information, their RAMP ID number, the company name of the RAMP account, name and email address of the new RAMP administrator. The administrator's login should be an email address assigned to an individual, not a group email. Please note that if a group email is chosen as the administrator email, those who have access to the email will also have access to edit the RAMP account and make any changes. The new administrator should create or already have an Angelino and RAMP user account. A new administrator can only be named if the person has both Angelino and RAMP user accounts. 
And lastly, be sure to include reason for the change. Now we will cover some certifications related questions. One common question about certifications is, what are the qualifications to be recognized as a certified company? The certification facts can provide guidance on the qualifications for the certifications listed on this slide. Some certifications include Disadvantaged Business Enterprise, or DBE, the Minority Owned Business Enterprise, MBE, and Women Owned Business Enterprise, WBE. And lastly, this also includes the Harbor Local Business Enterprise, LBE, certification. Another common certifi uh, certification question is, how do I apply to be a certified company recognized by the City of Los Angeles? The Office of Contract Compliance, or OCC's, Certification Outreach Regulations and Enforcement, also known as CORE, is responsible for administering the City's certification program and certifies certifications. You may visit the OCC website for more information. Currently, only the following certifications can be applied for through RAMP, the Local Business Preference Program, LBPP certifications, the Local Business Enterprise, LBE, the City Business Enterprise, CBE, Local Small Business, LSB, and Local Transitional Employer, LTE, the Local State Disabled Veteran Business Enterprise, DVBE LAWA, used only by the Los Angeles World Airports, LAWA, Local Business Enterprise, LBE Harbor, which is only used by Harbor, also known as the Port of LA. The certifications on RAMP user manual can provide guidance on how to request verification or recognition of current certifications and how to apply for the noted certifications on RAMP. Please note that when applying for any certifications, the legal name of your company should be used. Another common certification question is, my company is already certified. How do I request to be recognized as such on RAMP? Please download the certifications on RAMP user manual, which outlines the process for how to request verification of your current certifications to be listed on RAMP. But remember that you must already be a certified company in order to be verified as such on RAMP. Now for questions about opportunities. To be clear, when we speak about an opportunity or opportunities, we are referring to contracting opportunities with either the city or any of the, our regional partners who use RAMP to advertise their need for particular contractors. Some common opportunity related questions include, how can I view or download the documents listed with an opportunity? You must be a registered RAMP user and logged into RAMP to download and view the documents listed under an opportunity. How can I be notified when an opportunity is posted online? Registered and active users on RAMP will receive the notifications. When an opportunity matches the next code in your company's profile, you will receive a notification. Another opportunity related question includes, how do I get more information on a specific opportunity? If you have a question about an opportunity, please contact the department contact person listed for that opportunity who can answer questions regarding that specific opportunity. This slide and the following three slides will show how to navigate through an opportunity to help you find the opportunity contact person. On your account, go to search for opportunities. Fill in the information on the filters on the left, left slide, um, side to customize the opportunity search. Then click on any opportunity you are interested in, such as innovative partnership as shown, in the red, shown by the red arrow. This slide shows the opportunity details, which includes the contact person. If you're interested in bidding on this opportunity, you may click the add to bookmarks button to save the opportunity for future reference. Once you go back to your account, you may click bookmarks on the left side under the company details list of items in order to access any bookmark opportunities. The opportunity in innovative partnership will be saved to your account profile. 
Now for a review of questions regarding compliance documents. When responding to a city opportunity, please know that you'll be required to submit some contracting compliance documents with your proposal and any remaining documents will be required at the time of contract execution should you be selected as a contractor. Regarding the submission of compliance documents, please know that all companies registered on ramp may complete compliance documents in advance or at the time of responding to a contracting opportunity. All forms may only be completed and submitted by the company administrator on ramp under the compliance documents section of your pro business profile as shown on the next slide. Each form is only valid for a specified amount of time as indicated. You may refer to the company compliance documents manual under the ramp support section for detailed submission instructions. However, please note that these instructions do not apply to bidders or proposers responding to contracting opportunities advertised by the Los Angeles World Airports, the Port of Los Angeles, or the Department of Water and Power. Under the compliance documents section of your business profile, you may upload your disclosure ordinance and equal benefits for source hiring ordinance affidavits, as well as your executive directive 35 compliance information. The submitted forms will be verified by the city's Bureau of Contract Administration, also known as BCA, only if your company is a successful proposer or bidder selected for contract award. Lastly, pursuant to Executive 35, Executive Directive 35, if a bidder is selected and awarded a contract, if the contractor is a for-profit company or corporation, the contractor shall, within 30 days of the effective date of the contract, and on an annual basis thereafter, i.e. within 30 days of the anniversary of the effective date of the contract, report the following information to the city, city via ramp. The contractors and any subcontractors annual revenue, number of employees, location, industry, race or ethnicity, and gender of the majority owner. The purpose of ED35 is to collect standardized information from businesses that the city contracts with in order to determine which areas, industries, and types of businesses are faced with barriers to contracting. The data collected is for informational and statistical purposes only and will not be used in the bid or proposal submission, the bid evaluation or awarding process. For specific reporting instructions, please refer to the ED35 compliance procedure on ramp support. Lastly, we would like to offer some additional business resources. Please know that we have conducted a small, a number of informative small business webinars to provide small businesses with resources and guidance on how to do business with the city. A link to the YouTube recordings is also available for your use in accessing these past webinars. Also included on this slide are other helpful business resources for your reference. That completes our presentation for today, and we hope this information has been helpful in getting you registered on ramp, as well as answering some commonly asked questions and demonstrating some key functions. Should you require additional ramp information or assistance, please submit your request through our web, our web form, which can be accessed at the address on this slide. You may also wish to follow us on our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. At this time, we do have a few more minutes to verbally respond to a couple of questions from the chat. We would also like to welcome Elizabeth Diaz and Shannon Hoppes to assist in answering some questions. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, trying to see what questions weren't uh, answered in the chat. I believe we saw one that asked uh, whether RAMP is a legal entity. It is a uh, city-sponsored platform. Uh, so by that uh, presentation or representation, uh, I'm not sure what the uh, the uh, person answering that asking the question was uh, uh, trying to understand uh, by that question.
Are there any other questions that uh, might not have been answered in the chat for which you'd like to ask at this time? Yeah, this is a really good time to to ask any and all questions. I mean, really, the whole team is here. It's a, a unique opportunity, especially for those of you maybe that had some challenges re registering or and are coming back. And, and for those of you that are new, if there was any clarifications that we needed, I think, Liz, someone asked about the BTRC and needing that. It was, um, I don't know specifically what you wanted to know about the BTRC. The BTRCs are something you can get free from the Office of Finance. Um, I believe we even have that link link in there. But any business doing business with or in the city of LA is required to file for a BTRC. Is it's a business tax registration certificate. So um, it is free. Um, you have to file one in the city of LA. Uh, it's very quick. Um, it's just to keep your business on record. But that is also part of the information that you fill in when you are doing your business profile. And yes, all the information today is going to be emailed. We have a whole library that you can access of past um, information, including webinars and, and our other webinars for small businesses. We make sure you get all of the transcripts. You're going to get everything that you saw here today. Uh, Liz, is there anything? next or should we just open the mic so we can make sure we're covering the question hello yes Go ahead. hi uh well my name is Gashgar. i'm calling uh from uh, jupiter tracking and i have one question i was uh trying to look for opportunities in the um uh, like the um uh, ramp and uh I, I see there are something like uh, in some places they have like uh, purchases and services do you do you have like a separate uh, way of looking for purchases the city purchases or and the services contracts subcontracts uh in the platform or is it all together when we search I believe they're all together. There are times when our general services department is soliciting for commodities um, and construction. So you would just need to go through to the opportunities tab on RAMP and search for the kind of uh, uh, opportunity that that you um, uh, that you can provide a service for. Mm, okay. So we can't hear. I think we can't hear you, John. Sorry. Um, yes, there are. I, there might be a way to actually do a sort. Um, the team also. I don't know if Daniel's on here. VSS, their vendor self service, the one that you can go through for specifically for GSD, that might be available. But we'll follow up and provide that information to you. Um, but yes, we're we're all required to post on ramp both commodities and and professional services but if you're looking to do that sort um then um we'll get you the information on how you can better drill down to that but your your NAICS codes are also going to help do that sorting for you so anytime we post something new it will be sent to you based on the NAICS codes you have identified uh, but in terms of just perusing the website um yeah, we'll get you information on how to maybe better filter specific to what you're looking for. Again, whether that be more commodities or more professional services, but do fill out again, the NAICS codes, because that is going to be what identifies or sorts out what we send to you. And sorry, apologies, uh, Daniel here. Just a quick question. What, uh, what services do you provide? Just as a quick question again, services or goods? Uh, this was for the uh, the person who just had a question. Um, it, I was just wondering what type of service that what type of service do you provide? Just wondering. Uh, trucking service. Trucking services. Got it. Okay. Yes. Um, so I believe in our resources, as Shannon mentioned, um, please go to that next code guide and then look up the trucking services. And as she mentioned as well, um, please just go ahead and update your vendor profile with that information. Uh, but if you type in on the um, the opportunity 
search page, you can actually look up, just type in trucking and see what opportunities have existed, um, you know, in the past or if there's any open right now. So uh, I know there, there should have uh, been or there are a few, but I don't know if they're active at the moment. So. Uh, so, thank you, Daniel, and thank you, Shannon, very much, and Elizabeth, thank you so much. I, I just uh, confirm, you said uh, there is a guide for next codes, uh, like, is there a way to look better guides yeah. through um, the codes? Okay. So, I believe, uh, RevSport, can you put the next code uh, links back on the bottom of the chat, just to refresh it towards the bottom? There we go. So there's the next code manual. And then also there, uh, there's a link, I believe in there that leads you to the census website uh, that yeah. you can, and kind of it'll guide you how to find next codes, if that makes sense. It's relatively straightforward. Yes, yes, got it, got it, thank you. Hi, um, this is Karen Mattan from Micah Lyons Community Development. Um, quick question, um, we're right, this is the um, introductions for newly vendors, um, applying for a ramp up opportunities for uh, the county or city of um, Los Angeles. Um, now for new vendors um, applying for um, contracts or bidding, um, are there any cons uh, like referral consul consultants that ramp can provide um, so that we have more of a guidance for the new vendors on, you know, what is provided or what is needed um, so we can have a better chance of opportunity for contract bidding? Um, is this a service that you are providing for your clients or is it more as kind of um, as in just like a general, like where is there more information on city contracting? If you can clarify uh, that. It would be for, for both. Um, so we can provide services. Um, it's, you know, right for whatever the contract that is that we're looking for, for a specific, say for real estate or housing or things like that. So um when we look into those contracts, there may be some certain guidelines um, pertaining to that contract. Um, so uh, my request was, are there any consult consultants that can assist us on how to apply for these contracts? Because I know that these contracts are very specific for um, um, RAMP or for, for the specific um, vendor who's requesting um, for partnerships. Um, it's just something that, you know, um, and experience-wise, there may be something that is uh, for the new vendors that don't have um, that much experience or yeah. no experience at all. Yeah, definitely. So. Um, I think one one resource that I can quickly point out to would be our business source centers. Um, there is a business source center. There we go. Thank you. Um, Thank case you. Right there. Um, when okay. you get the slide deck, please click on those two. They do have uh, programs on um I, I believe technical assistance as well as helping people kind of understand the contracting process with the city as well. Got it. Pace specifically Got it. would be a great resource. They uh, uh, they actually have dedicated programming. There's also videos and additional resources that you can find on their website that can help you walk through that process and you can schedule an appointment with them as well. So um, awesome. yeah, please okay. check them out. Awesome. Thank you again, guys. Mm -hmm. I'd also suggest that you uh, take advantage of our small business webinar series. Uh, uh, also, the link there is provided to the YouTube um, series. So, yes, once you receive this uh, presentation, you'll have access to that information. And I did see a question on the chat. Is there a place we can find uh, L.A.? D, uh, WP annual budget information for all categories. That's not information that's provided on ramp. You could go to the city of Los Angeles website and search under the CAO's website for any budget information. So I hope that answers that question. Um, then there's another question that says, does this program include a business registered in the city of Santa Monica? Um, no, I, uh, not sure that we have, um, uh, I don't think they're a partner on RAMP. Is that correct, Daniel? I don't recall that they're a partner, a regional partner. Um, so um, you would want, uh, you, you may need to search for business opportunities with the city of Santa Monica directly. Correct. They're not a regional partner. Sorry, I was on mute. Right. Thank you for confirming that. Uh, and I think we asked, we answered that other question. So I think I'm just looking through the chat to see if there are any other questions that we haven't um, answered. There's a question from Brian Rivera. 
saying we host workshops and are eager to have someone come out to educate our business owners in the community. How can we arrange that? I think maybe we could have, again, um, there are a number of the business source centers that may be available to assist. Um, I didn't see that question. Crystal, did it say where that they're located? No, it didn't. Um, it's uh, from Brian Rivera. Brian, if you're there, um, you could uh, unmute and please uh, ask your question if you're still interested in asking. May have gone. Okay. Uh, I do see another question from Marisol. I joined late. Do you need to have a business license in LA to apply for LA opportunities? Yes, if you are um, uh, interested in doing business with the city of Los Angeles, you will be required to have a a, a BTRC. A, business uh, registration tax certificate. Uh, again, I saw a question again about business registered in Santa Monica. What about that? So you would need to check with the city of, Mon of Santa Monica. Um, sure. And a question from Sandy Bueno asking, where can I find the full list of agencies that procure through Ramp LA? <laughs> there are uh, the full list would be the city of Los Angeles, maybe on the partnership. Does anybody want to put up the partnership uh, slide? It's essentially the uh, essentially it's the city of Los Angeles and its partners uh, uh, or regional partners that uh can post opportunities on this platform. There we are. So we don't have a list of everyone. You would need to go through and see because it's various times different departments will post opportunities. And um, and they all use RAMP a little differently. Um, the gov other government agencies tend to actually physically post there. LAUSD posts all their procurement there as well. Um, we're getting some from county, but not all. So they all have different reasons and, and needs. Um, and as I stated earlier, some of them just ask us for a list of the, um, the vendors. So you might not see a physical posting from um, one of these agencies, but they're using the vendor pool to do their outreach or inform the community of, or the vendors of maybe what's coming up, events that they might be holding, um, outreach events. So, you know, it, it is used a little differently across the regional partners. Again, another related question about uh, our registered business in Santa Monica. Can anyone please let me know if we qualify for opportunities, if we are a registered business in Santa Monica, you must, you, while you may be registered in Santa Monica, you also must be registered with the city of Los Angeles. Uh, if you don't have a, as we mentioned before, a, a business registration tax certificate with the city of Los Angeles, no, you, you, you wouldn't be able to do business. So you would need to, it's free um, uh, and, and easy to to attain. So yes, you would need to register separately uh, with the city of Los Angeles if you if you wish to take advantage of any of the opportunities posted by the city departments. Um, and then there was another question that are professional services uh, such as executive coaching considered personal services? Yes, that would be considered a personal services type of contract. There's a question from CR Cochran McClurkin asking, once we get a bid, how are our business employees vetted? Thank you. Each department will indicate the process for the particular opportunity that you're applying for. Um, it's not usually something where the individual staff are, quote, vetted. Um, so each department, as they 
uh, post their opportunities, contracting opportunities, will include the requirements for the particular contract that will result from that procurement. There is also a question that said, I tried signing up and when I hit submit, it says I'm creating a duplicate record. What does that mean? And I believe um, uh, we've suggested, Diana, that you please submit a web form and we put the link there for you to do so, so that we can help you with that duplicate uh, record. That And that brings to mind, that is um, a possibility Sometimes what we find is uh, individuals um, have um, attempted to register only to find out that there may have already been uh, a registration for that particular um, business. So we see that you submitted a ticket, Diana, glad um, we should be able to help you with that issue. Um, there's another question that says, we can train in financing and procurement basics. So there's someone there offering their services. Thank you, Gladys. Um, and I believe- There's a question from Zara Be Behun. Um, how do vendors get paid by the city by check or direct deposit and who pays the subcontractors? You would need to pay the subcontractors, um, but maybe somebody can answer the question of how. Uh, I believe it's by check, but I that's not my- yeah, so it can either be by physical check or we do have direct deposit uh, should the contractor elect to do direct deposit. So we can do both. And subs typically get paid by the prime. The city doesn't pay out to the subs. And it looks like Michael Richardson has uh, his hand raised. Michael, uh, please ask your question. Hi, good morning, everybody. My my question is, I do um, labor compliance, job coordination, mm -hmm. and then a lot of the business, the companies, when you reach out to them, they already have like their job coordinator. They already have their job coordinator in place and it's problematic. Does the city mandate that if a contractor uh, wins the award that they send out the RFPs to everybody that has the proper NACE codes that uh, and and registered in the vendor portal? So the bid process, um, all primes are required if the business inclusion program is required on the project for the prime to reach out to vendors in that or subcontractors in that category. Um, however, uh, once again, they're not necessarily forced to utilize vendors that our outreach to. Um, that's more, uh, you know, depending on relationships and or, um, you know, uh, making a pitch to those primes. Sometimes that also kind of plays a factor here. Um, but in regards to the, you know, the jobs coordinator role, um, I, I do think there it's a little bit more complicated, I guess, because since it is attached to a PLA, the primes uh, kind of, um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, primes that have a PLA attached to their projects uh, choose the jobs coordinators that they would like to proceed on. Uh, it's been a few years since I've been a PLA analyst, but um, I think that's how they're how they roll. But if if that is the case, I would probably reach out to the Bureau of Contract Administration. Um, I don't know if you've spoken with uh, Ian Monte uh, at the um, Bureau of Contract Administration. He is the PLA administrator. Uh, it might be worth just asking him, hey, is there a way to um, more or less get, you know, I, I believe we do have a list of uh, jobs coordinators as well. So it might be worth uh, getting in contact with them and seeing if it's possible to get on that list or uh, just to get more information on the PLA jobs coordinator portion. I'm already on that list for mm -hmm. the uh, job coordinator, but I'm not getting a lot of notifications and that's my issue, especially when there's DBE or SBE goals or requirements. You know, they're supposed to notify us of the bid going out in response to the DBE goals and what have you, and that's not happening, but I, I'll reach out to the end. Yeah, I think that would be the best course for this because I don't think the jobs coordinators are on the initial outreach. I could be incorrect, but uh, I would double check with uh, BCA on this. Thank you. Thank you. Zara, you had your hand up.
Oh, good afternoon. Thank you. Yes, I was just wondering, is there any um, process in place to ensure that the prime contractor actually pays the subcontractor? That would need to be, I believe, the, the department, but I believe we just usually uh, entrust the prime to do so. The, go ahead, Daniel. Um, well, can I just suggest that you have something in place that protects subcontractors? Because when I had a, a county contract, they, um, you know, I didn't get paid and there was nothing that anybody could do for me. So mm. I'm just so, wondering how the city does that. We do. Yeah, so, Go ahead, Daniel. So right now, uh, and if I would probably recommend bringing to the attention of the city project administrator, whoever's actually working, uh, you know, the employee, city employee that's working on the project, letting them know you as a subcontractor have not been paid. I think that's first and foremost. Communication is key. Uh, I think another portion is, um, you know, and I think as Shen was about to mention as well, our contract is directly with the prime. Uh, and so if we do catch wind that there is something kind of amiss going on, we can have conversations with the prime contractor on a department by department basis and project by project basis. Um, but yeah, I mean, point well taken um, in terms of, um, you know, having something to ensure that subcontractors are paid. Um, that is kind of within the works um, in terms of, we would like to create a, um, a centralized invoice management system so that we can eventually see uh, that payments have been made to the subcontractors by the primes, but uh, that will take a, a bit of time to develop, but uh, it is in our, on our roadmap as well. So uh, Shannon, go for it. No, just, Exactly what Daniel said. I mean, that that is the extent of it. It is, it is a little difficult. But yes, if you notify us, then um, we can work with our Bureau of Contract Administration to um, work with that prime contractor. But they, by contract, are required to pay the subs. So, you know, that would be become a bigger conversation if and when we were notified of, of the non-payment. Okay, thank you. This has nothing to do with any city related contract. I'm just curious. Right. Thank you very much. No, helpful. Thank you. Anyone want to unmute themselves? I think we have another minute or so. We have literally one more minute. <laughs> I'm sorry, Shannon. Um, when I tried to register our existing signing lines, it says we already are registered. We were registered previously, and then we changed that to Santa Monica. Maybe they still have that, but how do I locate the BTRC if, if we are already registered? Does that mean it exists? Yeah, the yeah. staff can help you um, or send information to you on how to deal with the duplicate. Yes. So right there, um, Joanne said, just please submit a snow ticket at that address and we'll look into it and assist you with that. If, if, if I just had a BTRC already, is there any way just to look it up? Like, is there just a, an index? Yeah, well, should, there is a website that actually, um, I believe you, a BTRC lookup, uh, lookup tool. Let me just find it and I'll just pop it in the chat. Um, that would be awesome. Thank yeah, it would be for the Office of Finance. I think we have that. That link. Staff can help you populate that. Yeah, one more time for a question. Hello? Uh, hello. Here, go ahead. I have uh, yeah, so my name is Ruth Fleming and I, um, I'm registered and I was on a bid and I don't know whether it came through or not, but um, is there a, um, a YouTube video that shows us how to apply for a bid, um, the process and how long to wait, and et cetera, et cetera? Because I do safety vests and um, I just, I'm just targeting those individuals, those um, agencies that are, um, that need my particular vest. Like the airport, um, Long Beach, um, Port Authority, DOT, Department yeah. of Transportation. Right. So I, I'm just I I'm trying to be successful in getting at least a bid this year. So um, that's my goal, um, so that I could um, you know possibly be a, an example like you had at the beginning of this video. Well, first we have to have submitted, we have to have a need for it. 
Um, it's not to say that you can't meet with the different departments to make them aware of your your um, your wares, your your vests, products. yeah, uh, your products. Um, sorry, I blanked. Um, it's not to say that you can't meet with them and make them aware of why yours is superior. But um, again, you would need to respond to a need that we have. And okay. if you aren't getting anything, it's because we haven't said we are in the market for, for that. So okay. those are two separate things. So you'll mm -hmm. register on ramp with the next code that identify your product. So mm -hmm. when, and if we have a need for the vest, you'll mm -hmm. be notified, but then mm -hmm. it's separate for you to actually ask for meetings with those departments to make them aware of why your vest is, is different. And then it may spark them to still submit um, an RFP or um, ask for a request for a proposal or, or something to that effect. They would still need to go out to bid to see if there's any other vendor that has something right. similar to what you have. It's all very public. So those are two <laughs> ways to kind of go about the, the process. Uh, okay. Because I have been at this for a little bit, but um, yep. I'm just trying to make sure that I, I'm, you know, doing everything right. right and I want to make sure that it's a, you know, a successful um, campaign. Um, right. That's, yes, that's it takes it. a lot of effort. These aren't easy. They take, yeah. you know, you as all uh, small business owners are already tenacious and this takes a, a, another level of tenacity to really get through this, this process. But once you get mm -hmm. through it, like mm -hmm. um, that video said, you know, you'll, you'll become familiar and you'll have success, but you, you do just need to keep at it. And there are different resources that we can send you just on how to, how to go about that with our business source centers and different agencies that promote kind of workshops um, that yeah. aren't with the city of LA, but we also do have an economic uh, development department that does some of that work as well that we can <laughs> okay. send you. Yeah, because I had, I on this particular bid, I didn't know what the bid template looked like and it wasn't provided to me, you know, so I had to go to the library research, what type types of bids that are acceptable, the temporary, the basic bid template. Mm -hmm. So, and I submitted that and it was just going through that questionnaire. So that's, that, that was the whole reason why I was like, is there a, a YouTube that explains that little piece, you know, cause that would be so helpful. Right. And, uh, our, you, and you should be meeting with your small business development center or pace or uh, apex accelerator. And then they will tell you where your product possibly could go it could be the city the county the state a school district and everybody has a different set of portal mm -hmm. and um don't feel like you're all alone um that's what they're there for and they want to see you succeed please set up appointments i i can't um, stop encouraging people to do that um, you can meet with them as often as you need for free. They can help you. They're not going to do it for you, but they can review what you're doing here, um, you know, and, and you have enough time, right. hopefully, to meet a proposal. Okay? Yes. I have been meeting with my Apex person every week, and we've gotten our my capability statement on my website. Um, I The only, um, the, the most information that I am really excited about is this pace, so I'll just do my research there too um, this weekend and I'm move forward. Thank you so very much. I don't want to type your time and I really appreciate the, the work that you guys are doing and giving out the information. Again, my name is Ruth Fleming mm -hmm. and see you soon. Good luck. Thank you, Ruth, and thank you, Gladys. Thank you so much for your questions. Uh, thank you, Shannon, Elizabeth, and Daniel for chiming in. And this is just a reminder that this presentation was recorded and you will receive a copy of the recording, the slide deck, and the chat history. Our next monthly RAMP registration webinar is scheduled for Wednesday, August 28th at 11 a.m. Thank you for joining us this morning and have a good day. Hey, sorry, can I ask Daniel a very quick question? Sure. I, it might be uh, uh, asked before. I was just quickly uh, uh, asking. So uh, my my service is tracking service. There are lots of regulations on uh, the DOT part. And uh, I, I just was wondering, uh, like, which one was the one which we can go, like, ask our business-specific questions? 
uh, or you said coordinator or somebody else, we, we, we can go and ask somebody who has more experience in this stuff so we can get a little bit more tailored answer to our questions so we can tailor our business that's the uh, services. Yeah, so we have the business source centers, um, and I think the couple that we named was uh, New Economics for Women and PACE. Uh, PACE specifically does have a program that can help you um, kind of tailor your uh, your proposal and or um, I would follow up with them. But if not, there are other business source centers as well. Uh, let me find uh, let me find a link to them. Um, give me one moment. And I believe like Apex Centers, as uh, Gladys was mentioning prior, um, those are county or state or federal. And then there's also like county resources as well um, that can help you with this. Um, but at least from what the city provides, I'll just go ahead and put the, uh, the link here uh, to kind of get started there. And as well as uh, when you get the presentation, please do look up um, Pace. Um, Pace. They do have, okay. yeah. Pace has a, that would be, a, I think that'll be my recommendation to start there and then see what else is out there as well um, for uh -huh. specifically for city related, uh, I guess, opportunities. Got it. Got it. And there is a person who we can meet or just chat uh, to answer our question because I, I used to, I haven't uh, ever like um, bid it yet, but mm -hmm. I, I started to ask some questions, but I, I have never gotten <laughs> any answers from yeah. the project. I, I would yeah. say um, they might not have, quote unquote, the exact trucking requirements per se, but they will tell yeah. you uh, the general process of how to bid on a city project. Uh, my recommendation yeah. would actually be to uh, look up the, I would say, the opportunities on ramp if there are any open, maybe even if there are any closed or that have been awarded. Uh, look yeah. up who the, um, I would say, account or the administrator of that project was email them the email should be listed and then uh, there should be more specific uh, opportunity questions you can ask them uh, but they're probably not going to tell you how to do the bidding and so forth but uh, if it's more technical related to trucking they can probably assist your questions there uh, pace would be more how do i um, i guess you can say bid on a project what is the general process what does the paperwork look like what should i have ready yes. um, all of that so it's kind of a two-step one for the subject matter from the city and then uh, more general how do i bid from like a you know business or center or like pace. legal papers legal yes, documents for bidding okay they, yeah. they have pace pace will help with the paper for bidding the documents um, reach out to them they do have resources they yeah. do also have videos as well um and then also the small business webinar uh we do um have kind of videos kind of giving you an overview of what to expect there uh in terms of bidding on a very general level uh but yeah please do reach out to pace i think that'll be your your best bet to start Daniel, very, very quick, uh, very specific. Uh, you said PACE still is the good one f to uh, talk about like a specific uh, service needs, the city needs, right? Like uh, in terms of like tracking, what kind of specific uh, like uh, tracking services? Because every single thing is totally different in tra tracking. So I just wanted to get a little bit more information ahead of what I will be bidding because... I wanted to know like uh, what service to ask to have already established uh, before I go bidding. Th that's and I need to do some paperwork with the uh, like the FMCSA and stuff. So uh, th that's why Pace is the still good person to consult with uh, about my service, right? Sorry, I was muted. They will teach you how to bid. But yeah. for the specifics, please reach out to the um, the departments. Um, I think that's probably the best. I would say, that's like, just off the bat, if you want to write this down, um, yeah. I would talk to street services. I would uh, talk to services? general ser street services. The street uh, services. Yes, street services. Um, I would talk to GSD. Um, and then you can go up. If you just type in, like, the department name and then trucking, uh, you should actually be able to find information on who to contact. But... Um, uh -huh. I'll say GSD is another one because we do have, uh, I believe, um, asphalt maybe trucking. Um, I would say maybe even um, rec and parks, recreation, uh, LA City recreation or, you know, rec and parks, recreation yes. parks. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. And just reach out. Uh, just I would actually start with the uh, if you can't find opportunities on ramp, 
I would just reach out to the general lines and then they can, they might be able to tell you for the trucking type opportunities. But yeah, I think with that, I think we have to do, we do have to close the room. Um, so yes, I got the answers. Thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. Thank you so much.